This right here is how you know Trump's screwed. Congress, if you will, please investigate the political witch hunts against me currently being brought by the corrupt DOJ and FBI, who are totally out of control. They don't go after Biden with all of his corruption, the most corrupt president in history, but they keep coming after me from the day I came down the escalator, all failures. This continuing saga is retribution against me for winning and, even more importantly to them, election interference regarding the 2024 presidential election. It will be their updated form of rigging our most important election. Look at the polls. They can't beat me, MAGA, make America great again at the ballot box. The only way they can win is to cheat, and they cheat better than anybody has ever seen anybody cheat. Stop them now. Save our country. Make America great again. Because nothing screams confidence quite like posting a video begging Congress to do something about a barrage of prosecutions that, frankly, Congress has zero ability to do anything about. But sure, Trump's in good shape as far as his defenses go. Got it. Also, not for nothing, but even if Congress could do anything to stop DOJ's investigations, which they cannot because Congress is a legislative body, imagine thinking that this Republican-led House would be able to do that. Kevin McCarthy's conference couldn't even pass its own bill protecting gas stoves. I mean, hell, Kevin McCarthy's conference barely even chose Kevin McCarthy as its leader. It took 15 different tries just to be able to do that. The notion that this band of grifters and idiots would be able to properly defend Trump from the evidence against him in the DOJ's investigation is actually laughable. You're more likely to get Marjorie Taylor Greene to understand thermonuclear physics, which is to say, it ain't happening. Notice too how Trump says that the DOJ doesn't go after Biden. This guy is so tainted by his terminal both sidesism that he thinks that because he's being prosecuted means that there's some rule that Joe Biden has to be prosecuted too. It's as if he was given an earlier bedtime and now Joe has to go to bed earlier too because fair is fair. I don't know who wants to tell Donald Trump, who is a grown ass man, but just because one person is being prosecuted for literally committing crimes does not automatically trigger some arbitrary rule that a person in the opposing political party also has to be prosecuted. Not how it works. Trump even calls Biden the most corrupt president in history. Now, first of all, the projection is almost impressive here. Donald Trump is being prosecuted for stealing classified documents by the DOJ. He's being prosecuted for trying to overturn the 2020 election and inciting an insurrection at the U.S. Capitol by the DOJ. He's being prosecuted for pressuring Georgia's Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger to find 11,780 non-existent votes. He's being prosecuted for fraud by the New York Attorney General. He's being tried for a second defamation lawsuit against his abuse victim, E. Jean Carroll. And yet, he has the audacity to claim that Joe Biden is the most corrupt president in history? Here's a question. How? For what? Republicans haven't found a single reason to prosecute or even investigate Joe Biden, and yet they're all so committed to the bit that here they are pretending that he's done anything wrong to say nothing of this claim that he's the most corrupt president in history. If they were capable of shame, they might actually feel some. Trump then goes on to suggest that there's election interference, only it's against him. Imagine being prosecuted for literally, literally interfering in an election and then having the shamelessness to claim that actually it's the prosecutors who are interfering by daring hold him accountable for committing crimes. Because per usual, every accusation is a confession. Also, just think for a moment about what he's actually saying. That by virtue of prosecuting Donald Trump for his crimes, prosecutors are interfering in the election and so they shouldn't be allowed to move forward with this prosecution. In other words, anytime you prosecute a candidate, it could always be chalked up to election interference because after all, the prosecution in and of itself may have an impact on voters' decisions, so no candidate can be held accountable. Meaning if you, oh, I don't know, shoot someone on Fifth Avenue, all you gotta do is declare your candidacy for something and you immediately have a legal force field around you. And if any prosecutors dare try to prosecute you, then all you have to do is wail election interference and you're in the clear because after all, once you're a candidate, you're no longer subject to laws. Notice too how Trump says that the Democrats and their lackeys in the DOJ have no choice but to cheat because they can't beat Trump. Here's the thing, the Democrats don't need the DOJ to beat Trump. Honestly, the only thing the Democrats need to win is Donald Trump himself. Since Trump became president, the Democrats have overperformed in literally every election cycle. In 2018, Democrats won the House by the biggest midterm margin in history. In 2020, Joe Biden beat Trump himself by 7 million votes, held the House, and flipped the Senate. And in 2022, a year that history promised would be a red wave cycle for Republicans, Democrats still retained the Senate and only lost the House by a narrow five-seat margin. And to get even more specific, in this past cycle, every single Secretary of State and gubernatorial candidate running in a swing state on Trump's America First agenda lost. Every single one. 
So I get that Trump is trying to project strength by pretending that he's unbeatable, but that would hold just a little more weight if he hadn't spent the last six years losing. Here's the thing. You don't beg Congress to help you if you're operating from a position of strength. The fact that Trump needed to tape a video of himself pleading for Congress to save him is all the proof you need that Trump is not only going down, but he knows he's going down. If he had any faith in his lawyers, he'd let them do their job. The fact that he's appealing to Congress isn't exactly the ringing endorsement of them that you would expect. And by the way, if you're wondering why Trump's attorneys aren't inspiring much confidence, this latest appearance on air might explain why. In Fulton County, you've got the potential for a racketeering charge. That's not something people typically think about in the political lens. Uh, do you think that a racketeering charge will be brought, and how would you even expect an indictment like that to be alleged? I don't know, because when I think of racketeering, and it's funny, somebody mentioned this to me the other day. They said, racketeering is what they do for mobs. You know, that racketeering is an old right. school, old world thing. You don't associate that with the president. You don't associate that with something where he had a, a phone call with lawyers where he didn't do anything wrong. But what you have, again, is election interference. They're going to tie him up in litigation. They're going to tie him up in depositions and trials all the way up to the 2024 election. And look, I'm not saying that Alina Haba is a bad attorney, but I am saying that if you had a reputation for not paying your lawyers, this is probably who you'd end up with. So let's be perfectly clear. While things are already bad for Donald Trump, they're about to get a lot worse. And that is so apparent that even Trump himself, who has made a career out of elevating himself, is resorting to desperate taped video pleas for Kevin McCarthy and Marjorie Taylor Greene to save him. Will they be able to? Not a chance. But I gotta say, it sure is fun watching the panic set in.